Boy notices strange pattern on a lake before experts locate an object buried in the mud. A young boy walking through the woods on Kurtnamara's Sharmf Lake in Estonia noticed something unusual. He noticed a huge path dug into the lake's bank area which further led directly into the water. The boy was astonished and started thinking about how this was undiscovered. He shared this great discovery with some adults nearby. They too were surprised by the path and started doing their own research. Most people thought it was a general coincidence and nothing major would come of it, but soon enough they came across an incredible discovery. On a rainy afternoon, a small boy from Estonia walking through the forest on Kurtna Marasjav Lake noticed a very strange pattern path leading him directly into the Marasjav Lake. However, the path didn't look natural. Something buried inside the lake must have dug the path. He decided to share this huge discovery with the people because he wanted to know what was buried deep inside the lake. He alerted his parents who then told others in their neighborhood. By the time the word spread, everyone was curiously fascinated. People waiting started trying to pull out what was deep inside the water, but soon it was clear they couldn't do it alone. The ropes broke and people were finally exhausted. No matter how much they tried, the object didn't even move a bit. Looking at what was happening, more and more people started gathering in curiosity. They were all looking at the lake in amazement and were trying to predict the object stuck inside. Soon enough, they realized their tugging was all in vain. It was time to alert the authorities. The authorities sent a massively huge bulldozer to take out what was hidden beneath the lake. The massive bulldozer was driven into the forest area to use a few ropes in order to pull the object out of the water. The ropes were supposed to be attached to the heavy object first so it could have been pulled out of the lake. Fortunately, the authorities were aware of this fact and they sent their most skilled and professional divers. A few of the strongest ropes were attached to the object and then to the bulldozer by the professional divers. It was made sure that the whole horsepower of the vehicle was used in pulling it. The skilled divers dived into the water and disappeared for a while before reappearing on the surface. Everyone crossed their fingers until the moment the divers came back to the surface and happily announced the ropes were finally attached. By this point, the audience was already very excited. After attaching the ropes to the bulldozer, the dozer finally pulled something huge. It was covered with mud and dust as shovels, revealing exactly what was submerged in the water. Many people couldn't believe their eyes that something this huge could have been hidden in the lake for so long without anyone noticing. Most people by this time had already started predicting what it could be. As soon as the cleaning sped up, people saw a huge open hatch and no longer was a complete picture formed. Was this some sort of old transport vehicle from World War I or maybe World War II? It was hard to tell what exactly the object was before getting it completely out of the lake. The vehicle was still very dirty with lots of mud. People continued holding their breath. The tension of the audience was literally palpable. People armed with shovels started shoveling away the mud. They were shoveling the mud with terrific speed. It seemed like they were too excited to know what the object was. Most people were actually eager to find out what the mystery was about. The excitement grew as more and more of the vehicle was cleaned. Now the moment of truth. The object was completely cleaned, but what was it? It was some sort of a heavy vehicle, but not an ordinary one. The secret was finally revealed after hours of sweat and hard work. The object was now clean enough and understandable. Most people still weren't able to tell what exactly it was, but people started surfing through the internet to find out. To most, it looked like a tough, hard metal made object, but like a military vehicle. People were both astonished and amazed as they further examined it. With all the dust and dirt removed, it was now clear to everyone what they pulled out of the lake. One smart person standing there quickly surfed on the internet and found it was a Soviet-used World War II tank. He also argued this was one of the Soviet's most powerful tank of all time. For some reason, in amazing condition. Now the most obvious questions. How did this thing get into the forest and lake, and who sank it? People weren't able to control their nerves as the mystery went further. It was soon clear that the mystery was about to be solved. The people made no delay in forming the authorities, and the authorities immediately came to the spot and further informed that it was a T-34-76A built by the Soviet Union during World War II. The mystery was being more intensely solved. People started thinking about the possible reasons why the Soviets would sink such an extremely powerful tank into a lake. Many started giving their own predictions and reasons, but the original answer was yet to come. And trust me, it was pretty amazing. Finally, the authorities called expert historians on the spot to examine it. After a deep analysis of the tank, the historians finally said it was intentionally sunk by the Soviets to prevent the enemy from using the tank. Historians further explained that at the time of World War II, the T-34 was the most powerful tank in the world. 
The Soviets intentionally sank it so the approaching enemy couldn't use it against them. They did choose the best place to hide it. It was incredible research to find a 27-ton Soviet Union tank laying in the water for around 56 years. The water managed to erode some parts of the metal, but it still looked amazing. It almost looked like you could jump in and start going. This wasn't the first tank to be found in a lake. Several German tanks have also been found in Russian waters. There are still several undiscovered tanks yet to be found, too, most of which are random, such as built for construction work. Now it was time to tow the tank and leave it somewhere safe. After a few hours, the tank was now successfully towed far enough to the lake shore. People spent a lot of time taking pictures and posing with this incredible piece of history. It was just incredible to find something this old in the water and in such perfect condition. A few years after this incident, though, something even stranger occurred in a lake on the opposite end of the earth. About 100 miles from Portland, Oregon, the famous Detroit Dam built on Ray Versantiam forms a very well-known reservoir, Detroit Lake. The reservoir provides water to the city of Salem and fascinates tourists every autumn. The reservoir was first built to provide electricity to nearby places. Today, however, it is a small fishing paradise where rainbow trout and king salmon swim. But the lake becomes extremely fascinating when once a year, no fish swim in it. Towards the end of the year, the lake starts getting dried up and completely dries off, barren land with just rocks about it. The locals flock to the mountains of Marion country at this time, not only to see the barren land, but something else too. They draw themselves to the dry lake to crack the mystery this lake holds. They knew there was a great mystery, but it could only be cracked during the autumn and early winters. In this epic race of cracking the mystery first, most travelers usually abandon Route 22 between October 1st and January 1st, hoping to get a good look at the history of this beautiful lake. There are literally hundreds of people every year who try to find out the history. This is because of what protrudes from the bottom. The lake bed starts looking like a troop of soldiers as if it were a giant. A vast barren landscape gets revealed as soon as the water slowly dissipates. With this, it also reveals the long-kept secrets of the land. As the lake dries up, hundreds of tree stumps become visible. These tree stumps run through the whole landscape like lunar craters and overall create an eerie atmosphere. You could easily see thousands of tree stumps lying on this barren land. They're a bit different from usual as well. Touching one of these feels like some unusual bark. Obviously, this was because it was a very thick stump resting at the bottom of the famous Detroit Lake for decades. Many people started wondering as if these stumps were dried up because of the lake. In summers especially, this lake is a very popular place for water sports. But few argue that the lake had some history of its own and this was just a part of it. In 2015, a major drought struck the region and the water level dropped to a record low, revealing the deepest deposits of the reservoir. It was the first time since the water level had dropped that much since 1969. Persistent drought and the lack of snowfall in the Cascade Mountains made sure the water level of the lake fell 143 feet that year. Dave Zahn, assistant sheriff of Marion County, took this as a positive sign and marched towards the lake to explore what was beyond the tree stumps. He wanted to crack the mystery the lake was holding and this was probably the best time. He didn't have any idea what he'd come across, that it was something unusual no one discovered before. In an interview, he said that he thought of that journey as a treasure hunt for him and he'd find something in it. He wandered across the dry lake bed and ran his fingertips over the stumps till he saw something unusual. He spotted something a fair distance that seemed extraordinary to him, something that definitely didn't belong. He now had to find out what that strange thing was which was waiting for over 70 years at Seaboden to be found. On a barn part of the lake bed that had been underwater for over 70 years, the assistant sheriff was shocked to see what initially looked like a thick branch lying between two tree stumps. As he approached the curiosity, he came to know what the object really was. Being buried and covered in sand and mud, it wasn't clear to him what it was at first. He looked at it closely and tried to figure it out. When he looked at it again, he wasn't able to believe his eyes. He immediately came to know that he'd found something remarkable. It was a wooden carriage. It stuck out of the mud and was very well preserved. It had huge wheels attached to it with a spring seat. The low oxygen content in the reservoir was a huge factor for preserving this unique piece of history almost perfectly. Besides this, a huge metal plate was also attached to the carriage that provided some of the details about this piece of great art. The metal plate clearly showed the manufacture of the carriage. Dave took a breath of relief as now he knew this find would go down in the history of the region. The carriage was sent for restoration by the authorities. After restoration was done, it was revealed the carriage was built by the largest automobile manufacturer in America, the Milburn Wagon Company from Toledo, Ohio. 
The Great Milburn Wagon Company was founded in Toledo in 1848. The company became pretty popular in the States after some years as they started producing stylish carriages before they were replaced by electric cars. The carriage told an amazing story. Moreover, the discovery had opened a path to the past. The history of Detroit Lake wasn't exactly a secret, but keep in mind that not everyone from Oregon was familiar with the history of their region. And this discovery does remind us of all the time when the new Detroit was a great settlement. People of the region were so astonished by the mysterious carriage that they started inquiring about the story behind it. The carriage gave fascinating insights into the automotive history of the region. The enthusiastic locals took no time in picking up the intriguing story. They had their own opinions on it. Some of them said that in the 1880s, pioneers had left the state of Michigan, who then directed these carriages like those found by Deputy Dave. Soon, the pioneers founded a small settlement along a river. Initially, they called it Co, but later, when their settlement got popular and more and more people started coming from Michigan, it was renamed New Detroit, after the largest city in its home state. As the settle gained popularity, it gained its unique importance at the time. Many people deserting the merchant town came to the settlement to live. By the time it became well known, its population mark crossed 200, which wasn't exactly low at the time. Most happy by the settlement were the forest settlers. It was like a dream come true. They built wooden huts out of the wood that was like sand at the time. Men, more and more people became part of it and attracted more and more people. Construction workers were initially housed by the small community for the Oregon Pacific Railroad project. But the small community eventually flourished on its own as residents built cafes, churches, hardware stores, and logging operations. Until the 19th century, the place was only accessible by train and wagon and was considered the most important employer at the time, but it was also struggling with a huge problem. They couldn't count on and had to build a dam for the Detroit Lake River and its floods. <laughs>